A Peanuts cartoon showed Peppermint Patty talking to Charlie Brown. Guess what, Chuck? The first day of school and I get sent to the principal's office. It was your fault, Chuck. My fault, Charlie responds. How could it be my fault? Why do you say everything is my fault? You're my friend, aren't you, Chuck? Then you should have been a better influence on me. Who influenced you as a child, for good or for bad? Who influences you now? We are all influenced and all have influence. Being a social media influencer is a more popular career choice for children today than being an astronaut. These influencers are people who have built a reputation for their knowledge and expertise on a certain subject. They make regular posts about that topic on social media and generate large followings of enthusiastic, engaged people who pay close attention to their views. You may not be a YouTuber, or Instagram influencer, but sociologists tell us that even the most introverted individuals will influence 10,000 other people during their lifetime. The story of Jesus's encounter with the woman at the well found in John 4 shows the incredible power of influence. Jesus meets the Samaritan woman about noontime Noontime isn't the time to go to a well. All the women of the village go to the well in the cool of the morning to talk about their children or share a joke whilst they get their day's supply of water. But not this woman. Only when it was noon, when the sun was blazing down on her, the time Middle Eastern people take their siesta, when the roads were empty so that no one would spit on her or curse her, only then did she dare go for water. After all, she was an adulterer and far below the standards of the rest of the other women. The negative opinions of her neighbours influenced her daily life and we can imagine her very identity. None of us can honestly say we are not influenced by the words, attitudes and actions of others. But we can choose whether we let the influence of others trap us or set us free. We have a choice about whether the influence others have upon us honours God or is simply the taking the easy option. In John 4 verse 9 we read, The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Understandably, the woman was influenced by the conventions, traditions and religious rules of the day. Her perception of the world was shaped by long-standing beliefs on what was right and what was wrong. Jesus came to break down barriers that simply sought to exclude and create division. And he comes to break down barriers which exclude and create division today. We need to engage our minds so we are not simply influenced by the status quo, but also influence the future for good. As the story progresses, we see a point where the woman at the well is torn between letting the voices of fellow humans influence her or letting the voice of Jesus influence her. Jesus requests a drink. A conversation begins. A conversation which convention banned, but a conversation where the powerful influence of Jesus comes alive in this woman's life. Jesus's initial request is met with confusion, which leads him to offering something far greater than a glass of water. He offers a fresh, bubbling spring, which can transform her life. She's interested. But then the conversation reaches a new depth. This is not just any Jewish man brave enough to break convention. This is the Messiah. For this man knows the most intimate details of this woman's life. This Messiah 
This Jesus has such an influence on the woman that she leaves her water jar beside the well and runs back to the village, telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? This is a woman who moments earlier chose to come to the well at midday to avoid contact with anyone. The influence of Jesus transformed her life and her well. How much does Jesus influence your life and your well? How is your lifestyle influenced by Jesus? How is what you say and how you say it shaped by your faith in Jesus? How is the way you spend your time guided by him? Mother Teresa said this, Put yourself completely under the influence of Jesus, so that he may think his thoughts in your mind, do his work through your hands, for you will be all powerful with him to strengthen you. As people, we sometimes like to think that we are independent thinkers, unswayed by the ways of the world. There is strength in that, but actually we are ultimately called to be swayed by the ways of Jesus. We are called to be shaped, changed and transformed so that we bear the image of Christ in the world. As we are influenced by Christ, we are to influence others for Christ. I heard a most likely fictional joke about Barack and Michelle Obama recently. It seems they were on holiday one weekend and decided to go for a drive to see the beautiful countryside. After a while, they needed to stop for petrol. They pulled into a tiny petrol station and walked out and out walked a man to help them. Michelle looked up and screamed at the top of her lungs, Ben, is that you? I can't believe it. She jumped out of the car and gave the man a big hug and proceeded to talk with the man for a long time. After they finished talking, they hugged again and Michelle got back into the car. As they were driving away, Barak turned to Michelle and asked, Honey, who was that? That was Ben, an old boyfriend of mine, she responded. We dated for a long time and almost got married. Just think, said Barak, if you had married him, today you would be the wife of a petrol station attendant. No, said Michelle. If I had married him, today he would be the President of the United States. The power of influence. The Anglican minister William Griffith Thomas wrote this. Jesus is the greatest influence in the world. There is a fifth gospel being written. The work of Jesus Christ in the hearts and lives of men and nations today. The influence of Christ did not stop when he ascended into heaven. It was only just beginning. It was the ripples from 2000 years ago that go on to change the world today. When we throw a stone into the water as a child or as an adult too, as I did last week on holiday, it is fascinating to watch the ripples. The influence of one stone is felt far and wide. In a novel by Santa Montefiore, I read this. Imagine a pebble dropped into a pond. You may think that the pebble simply sinks to the bottom, but you are wrong. The pebble causes ripples that run to the edge, where they nudge a leaf off the bank. A bumblebee is drowning in the water, but now he is able to climb onto the leaf and save himself. The bumblebee flies off and lands on the arm of a child who watches in wonder and thus develops a love of nature. The child's parents are fighting, but the mother sees the bee and panics that her child will be stung. Both parents rush to help the child and forget their argument, united in their love for their child. The bee flies off and, well, you can invent whatever story you like. The point is, you do nothing in isolation. What we do, how we act, what we say and how we love does not just impact the one next to us. 
it impacts the one next to them and the one next to them and the one next to them too for good or for bad the story of god and his love transformed the world through the love which rippled out from jesus to the first disciples from the first disciples to the early church from the early church to the not so early church from the not so early church to the 21st century church from the 21st century church to us and it is our privilege to continue rippling with the wonderful love and grace of god when the woman at the well encountered jesus and was powerfully influenced by him she went back to her village filled with hope causing many people to stream from the village to see him and then we read many samaritans from the village believed in jesus because the woman had said he told me everything i ever did when they came out to see him they begged him to stay in their village so he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and belief. The ripples of good news, which came from this broken, ostracised, downcast woman, went on to influence the lives of many. It was through this one woman encountering Jesus that many, many more came to encounter him too. Your encounter with Jesus should not end with you. The positive influence should ripple out much further into the seas of people around you who desperately need to know goodness, know hope and know God. Jesus tells us to love one another. You're never going to have the opportunity to love all the 7.8 billion people who live on earth. But you do have the opportunity to love the person sitting next to you. You do have the opportunity to love the people in this church. You do have the opportunity to love the people you share a house with. You do have the opportunity to love the people in your friendship circle. You do have the opportunity to love the people you walk past on the street or drive by on the motorway. You do have the opportunity to love the people who work in the coffee shop or the supermarket. You do have the opportunity to love the people who God places in your life this week. And the ripples of good which can come from this can never be counted. For our God is a God who multiplies blessings from the little we offer. Christian missionary Heidi Baker says this. Ministry is simply loving the person in front of you. It's about stopping for the one and being the very fragrance of Jesus to a lost and dying world. The power of God's story is that it is by the influence of invested disciples of Jesus that the world can be changed. As through ripples of goodness, the world learns to walk in the way of love. Mother Teresa says this, I alone cannot change the world. But I can cast a stone across to create many ripples. The same is true for us today. When the woman at the well returned to her village and told of her encounter with Jesus, people were desperate to go and see him. How about us? When people encounter us, are they desperate to learn more about the Jesus who inspires and influences us? Does our presence in the world create ripples of kindness and joy? When we influence others, are we ultimately influencing them for Jesus? As we look to journey as disciples, may we be increasingly influenced by Christ and be increasingly influential for him. May the only ripples that come from us be ripples of love. God bless you.